It was April 1979. The Melling family were spending their Easter holiday in Mornan Smith, a picturesque village in Cornwall, England. On Saturday the 17th, the two children of the family, 12-year-old June and 9-year-old Vicky, had headed out on their own to explore the area. They were passing by St Mornan and St Stephen's Church when, all of a sudden, in the sky above the bell tower, there appeared a huge creature. It looked like a man, but it had the wings of a bird. The girls ran back to their parents and they were so disturbed by what they'd seen that their father cut the holiday short. Those girls, it seems, had had an encounter with the Owlman of Mornan. The origins of the Owlman are unclear. A lot of websites that I read whilst researching this reference a 1926 article in the Cornish Echo about two boys that were chased by some sort of large and ferocious bird. The problem is, no website seems to provide any pictures of the article so you can read it for yourself. I had to go to the book The Owlman and Others by Jonathan Downs to find the article and read it for myself. The bird was described as being about three feet long with a body like a duck, cream and brown coloured plumage with black on the tips of the wings. Now that doesn't sound anything like an Owlman to me, but there's so many websites that are talking about this article and linking it to the Owlman story that I had to put that in there. It seems more likely that the boys were chased by an angry goose rather than some sort of owl-headed cryptid. The first clue we might have to the Owlman's origins is when the surrealist artist Max Ernst visited Cornwall in 1937 with a group of other artists. Apparently this group were into all sorts of weird stuff, including occultism. The story goes that Ernst and his cohorts went off into some Cornish woods one night and performed strange rituals in an attempt to summon animal-human hybrid entities. Max Ernst himself had a weird obsession with birds and he often painted an alter ego called Lop Lop, a shape-shifting, part man, part bird creature. He also painted scenes that, looking back on them now, seem to mirror future encounters with the Owlman. And take a look at this one, it was painted in 1924 and it's titled Two Children Are Threatened by a Nightingale. The weird thing about this is, there are two children, and a nightingale, but it's also this eerie human figure hovering above the building, carrying away another child in its arms. Apparently the painting was inspired by a fever-induced hallucination that Ernst had as a child, but to me it reminds me of June and Vicky Melling seeing that humanoid creature hovering over the Mornan church. So did Ernst and Co. summon the Owlman? Maybe it's some sort of surrealist egregore, something that stepped out from the picture frame and took on a life of its own? Or perhaps the Owlman is the spirit of Ernst himself? It might just be a coincidence, but Max Ernst died on the 1st of April 1976. This was just two weeks before the Melling girls had their encounter. And three months after the girl's encounter, the Owlman was seen again. Behind the Mornan church, the land slopes down through a wooded area until it reaches a beach. It was in this wooded area that two 14-year-old girls were camping, Sally Chapman and Barbara Perry. At around 10pm on the 3rd of July 1976, the girls were awoken by a strange hissing noise. They looked around outside their tents and saw a weird figure standing among the pine trees. He was described as being as tall as a man but had the face of an owl and was covered in grey feathers. His eyes were large and glowed red and it had big pointed ears. On its feet were large black pincer like claws. At first the girls thought it was someone in a costume but then the creature flew up into the air and disappeared into the trees. The following day, another two girls had an encounter with the Owlman in the same area. 
a letter was sent to a local paper from a girl saying that on the 4th of July 1976 she and her sister were playing in the wood behind Mornan Church when they saw a large creature up in a tree. It was described as being as big as a man but it had legs bent backwards like a bird's. Its eyes were red and its feet looked like sharp black crab claws. And like the last encounter the creature then flew upwards and disappeared above the treetops. The first two encounters were reported by a man named Doc Shields. Now Doc Shields is an eccentric character to say the least. An artist, stage magician and monster hunter with an interest in the occult. At around the time of the Owlman sightings he was taking part in a hunt for the Morgar. This is a sea monster that supposedly lives in the waters around Cornwall. In March of 1976 two photos of the Morgar were sent to a local paper from someone named Mary F. Doc Shields came on the scene and he announced that he was going to try and summon the Morgar to appear. Morgar! 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 He then orchestrated an elaborate magical ritual on the beach in Cornwall involving naked witches which were his own daughters dancing around. As you can imagine this brought a lot of press attention for Doc Shields. It was because of his reputation for hunting monsters that he was approached, first by June and Vicky Milling's father and later by Sally Chapman and Barbara Perry and they both provided him with eyewitness accounts and drawings of the Owlman. Now there is a problem here. Duck Shields does have a reputation for being a bit of a prankster. Over the years he's written numerous books about how to fake paranormal phenomena for stage magicians and he has books like The Shields Effect how to become a psychic superstar. It teaches you how to create a sort of mythos around yourself which you can leverage for publicity and fame. Many people suspect that Mary F, that mysterious woman that sent the photos of the Morgar to the newspaper was actually Doc Shields sowing the seeds for an elaborate hoax. Some also suspect that Doc Shields invented the story of the Owlman. As far as I can tell nobody else has ever been able to track down the Melling family or the two girls that saw the creature in the woods. It's very possible that he never existed at all. Similarities between the eyewitness drawings suggest that they might have been drawn by the same person, although it does say that the drawings are based on eyewitness sketches so Shields might have redrawn them himself from the children's drawings. Some people have also analysed the handwriting between these two accounts and they think they might have been written by one person. I don't know much about handwriting analysis so I can't really say for sure but there's something about how the dots above the eyes drift slightly to the right in both the accounts. But as I say I don't know much about this subject so I can't really comment on it myself. There's no real proof that Doc Shields invented the Alman. It could be as he says he had a reputation as a monster hunter so he was genuinely approached by people that had seen something strange. Shields seems to be a chaotic neutral sort of character, a true surrealist who deliberately sows the seeds of confusion and doubt around all that he does. It doesn't necessarily mean that everything that he's involved in is a hoax but it does mean that we should take it all with a hefty pinch of salt. After the Owlman flap of 1976 there were sporadic sightings. According to the book Alien Animals by Janet and Colin Board, there were two more sightings of the Owlman in 1978, once by a 16 year old girl and a few months later by three young French girls but looking into these cases a bit more Doc Shields' name crops up yet again as the source of these stories. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're fake. I suspect at that time anyone who had an encounter with the Owlman would think of contacting Doc Shields. Eleven years later in 1989 there was another encounter and this time it seems that Shields had nothing to do with it, at least not directly. There was a young couple known as Gavin and Sally, although that's not their real names. They'd heard the legend of the Owlman and decided to go into the woods behind Mornan Church to investigate. 
Gavin later contacted the paranormal researcher Jonathan Downs, author of the book The Owlman and Others that I mentioned earlier. He related his story about what happened that night in the woods. He said, We had a torch and I was shining its beam across the trunks about 15 feet off the ground. Every couple of hours we would walk along the fringe of the wood, and this was the third time that evening and it was beginning to get dark. From a distance the trees looked black, but closer up the branches and trunks could be seen. We saw the animal at about 9.30pm. It was standing on a thick branch with its wings sort of held up at the arms. I'd say it was about 5 feet tall. The legs had high ankles and the feet were large and black with two huge toes on the visible side. The creature was grey with brown and the eyes definitely glowed. On seeing us its head jerked down and forwards, its wings lifted and it just jumped backwards. As it did, its legs folded up. We ran away. Six years later, in 1995, a letter was sent to a local paper. It claimed to be from a student of marine biology from Chicago. She'd been on holiday in Morn and Smith and was walking through the woods behind the church at around 9.15 when she saw in a tree a creature described as the size of a man with a ghastly face, a wide mouth, glowing eyes and pointed ears. It had huge clawed wings and was covered in feathers of silver grey colour. The thing had long bird legs which terminated in large black claws. All attempts to track down this Chicago and witness have failed. Many suspect the letter to be another of Doc Shields' pranks, although there's no real proof either way. Sightings continued up until the present day, but most don't seem to have much more information about them. So instead, let's look at some unusual footage, and this was captured by a YouTube channel called Ghost Adventures of Cornwall. Thank you very much to Mark for letting me use your footage in my video. I'll put a link to the original video in the description. They decided one night to investigate St. Mornan and St. Stephen's Church, but there's one bit where the camera pans across the graveyard, and this figure is standing in the background. There was two people in the graveyard, the guy holding the camera and his friend who was stood behind him at the time. They didn't notice this strange horned man until they played the footage back frame by frame. Could this be the Owlman finally caught on camera? I don't know if the Owlman is a hoax. That could very well be the case. However, I am a strong believer in the idea that a fictional story can take on a life of its own if enough people can be convinced that it's real. I talked about this in my Ghost Watch video, how the fictional Ghost of Pipes managed to possess the minds of many of its younger viewers, giving some of them psychological effects that lasted long after the program had finished, one person even took their own life. There's also the case of the Slender Man. It started out as a Photoshop contest and ended up with two girls dragging their friend into the woods and stabbing her 19 times because they thought they were receiving instructions from the Slender Man himself. Maybe something like this could have happened with the Owlman? You could look at it from a purely psychological perspective. You convince people that the Owlman exists and next time someone hears a strange noise or sees a dark shape in the woods behind Mornan Church, they might believe that they had an encounter with the Owlman itself. Or you could get a bit more out there, you could look at the Owlman as a kind of tulpa, a thought form made flesh. Could the strange rituals performed by Shields and Ernst really have conjured something more solid up? Maybe hoaxing it was a method for willing the Owlman into existence, getting enough people to believe in it that it actually becomes a reality, a decades long prank and a genuine work of magic at the same time. That might go a bit far for some viewers, but I've been interested in the interaction between the mind and physical reality ever since I read the holographic universe when I was younger. I'm not sure if I totally believe that the mind can create an owl man out of nothing, but it's the sort of thing that I like to speculate on, and hey, it's nearly Halloween so I'm allowed to indulge in some spooky speculation. The owl man, he might be real, he might be a prank, he might be an elaborate work of surrealist art, or maybe he's all those things at the same time. 
So I hope you enjoyed this typically conclusionless video. I don't really like telling people what they should think, but I like giving them something to think about, so hopefully you found this interesting. Massive thanks, as always, to everyone who's supporting the channel. October always puts me in the mood for a good spooky story, so I hope you guys are enjoying the content. Here's some more videos you might enjoy. Check out the creepy folklore playlist if you like this sort of thing. Thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.